Here's 10 reasons why I never hold any surplus stock in my business. Number one, money tied up in stock. I don't want money tied up in stock. I wanna just buy it and move it straight on. Who wants to tie money up in stock? A lot of people do tie money up in stock, but my business model is where I'm just buying it and moving it straight on. I don't want stock sat there that I'm looking at and my hard earned money is tied up in that stock. I wanna, I wanna flip that stock, get my money in and out of that stock immediately, okay? That's what I wanna be doing, which is why I don't hold any stock. Number two, maybe it's the wrong price. You've bought stock and you are holding that stock and you've not sold on that stock. Maybe you bought that at the wrong price. Maybe it's the wrong type of stock. Why are you still holding on to that stock? I don't want to be holding on to stock and thinking, oh, I can't do anything with it. And, you know, I'm sat there looking at it. So is it the wrong type of stock you've bought if you are holding on to that stock? You know, if you've bought a good deal, you won't be holding that stock. You will just move that stock straight on. Okay. Three, tying up valuable warehousing space. Why do I want stock in a warehouse, tying up valuable warehouse space? Maybe you've got your own warehouse. Maybe you're, you've got a storage facility and you've got stock in that storage facility. It's tying up space. Why is it there? Why is it sat there? Uh, why isn't it moved straight on to a buyer? Okay, why is it sat there taking up valuable warehousing space? Maybe for other stock that you can bring in. But as I say, I don't hold on to any stock because I don't want it sat in a warehouse taking up space. You know, I want it sat in my buyer's warehouse and I've got paid for that stock. But for storage costs, if you're buying and holding on to stock, you are going to be more than likely bringing it into a storage and you're going to then have a monthly storage bill. I don't want storage bill. That's like monthly rents that you've got to pay each month. And like I say, a lot of companies in this business do have monthly storage costs. That's what they have. That's one of their big outgoings, one of their big expenses in their business, paying a monthly storage bill. I have no monthly storage bills, okay? And that's because I never hold any stock inventory. And that's a great reason why I don't want to hold stock inventory, because I don't want a monthly storage bill. You know, a monthly storage bill is going to eat into your profit on that stock that you are buying and holding onto in a storage. That's going to eat into any profit that you're going to make. By the time you sold that stock, the, the actual profit that you make isn't a true profit because you've got to think about, you know, your storage costs that you've just paid on that stock that has to come off the profit that you've made on that stock. Um, so, no, no. That's a big no-no for me. But five, stock depreciates. Okay, if you don't know what depreciate means, it means it goes down in value. Okay, stock that you buy, surplus stock that you buy, it never goes up in value. It only ever goes down in value, my friends. Every week and month that you're holding on to stock, it's only ever going to go down in value. Okay. Number six, extra transportation costs potentially if you are buying and holding stock then basically what you've done is you bought the stock from your supplier you've you've transported it to a storage it's now sat in a storage and when you've sold that stock you are then transporting it to your buyer that you've sold it to that could potentially be two lots of transport costs okay one when you bought the stock and transported it into your storage and then when you sold the stock you're paying another lot of transport costs to the transport company that's two lots of transport costs on that stock that is a lot of again that is eating into your profit that you're going to make on that stock that's why I never hold any inventory. I will do the deal with my supplier and I will flip that straight on to my buyer. Normally, I will get my buyer to collect that stock where the stock is sitting in a warehouse. And I'm not going to be involved in the transportation of that stock whatsoever. So I've got no 
uh, no transport costs to knock off my profit okay so you know I'm, I'm cutting out all transportation most of the time if I can at the very worst I will deliver that to my buyer but at least it's only one transport cost you know a lot of people will buy stock bring it into a warehouse sell it and then deliver it to a buyer that's two lots of transport costs that's a no-no my friends uh, num number seven I don't want the stress of buying and holding stock and having it sat in a warehouse and you know I'm at home thinking on a night damn I've got that stock in a warehouse um, and I haven't done anything with it yet and I've got money tied up in that stock I'm paying storage costs and you know I, I don't want the stress of sat sat I don't want the stress of sitting on stock and you know I, I want to sleep well at night my friends I want to sleep well and think to myself I've got no stock I'm not holding any stock you know I don't want to be thinking oh I've got that pallet there and I've got a few pallets of that there and I you know and I'm thinking oh I've got this stock in there and you know I need to do something with this stock here and I don't ever have that worry I don't have that worry of thinking about any stock that I'm sat on any stock that I'm holding never ever have that worry or stress and you know why because I never hold any stock in my business I don't have the stress of thinking about any stock that I've bought and paid for and I'm sat on um, nah I don't need that kind of stress in my business number eight this one's this one's a mad one people in the business um, they love the idea of buying and selling they love the buzz of buying and selling stock sure it's a great thing the buzz of buying and selling stock it's great but a lot of people in the business in the surplus business they fall in love they fall in love with the stock that they are buying okay they get emotionally attached to that stock and you know they think oh look at that stock it's a great it's great it's great it's a great deal and you know the, the fall in love with the stock and the forget about oh I need to buy and sell that stock and get a get get my profit as quick as possible they just get emotionally attached and they'll bring it into a storage and they'll stand there and they'll look at the stock that they've bought that they've fallen in love with and they'll stand there admiring it thinking oh what a great deal no 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 okay the trick in this game is never fall in love with any deals okay never fall in love with any stock never look at any stock and go oh that looks amazing that looks fantastic um, forget that my friends okay stock is just for buying and selling don't get emotionally attached to stock don't fall in love with stock finally number 10 if, you, if I'm buying and holding stock and you know I've not moved that stock straight on is that a good deal you know why why someone bought stock and holding on to it I'm thinking well why have they done that if that if it's such a great deal why haven't they just bought it and moved it straight on flip that stock straight on if it's a good deal you would be buying it and moving it straight on yeah I I, I don't want to you know I don't want to buy a deal and think right now I bought that stock now I've got to go and find a buyer for that stock um, no I've already got a buyer lined up for my stock okay and this is what I'm teaching in my business my friends you know when I'm offered stock I'm putting that deal out there to my potential buyers I'm planting the seeds I'm getting the ball rolling I'm the middle I'm the middleman okay I'm the guy in the middle between my supplier and my buyers and I'm getting interest from my buyers and and then I start putting the deal together as soon as I get a spark of interest okay and this is what I'm doing my friends I'm not buying and holding stock and then thinking right I'm gonna offer it to this guy I'm gonna offer it to this guy no I'm offering it to my people before I've done the deal with my supplier and you know if your pe if people are buying and holding stock then my question is why 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 are you buying and holding on to stock why haven't you got a buyer already lined up if it's such a good deal then you should be buying and moving that straight on if it's such a good deal why are you buying it and bringing it in and holding that stock okay so that guys 
those are my 10 reasons why I never hold surplus stock in my business. Never, ever, ever. And that's my business model. That's what I teach. A lot of people in the business do buy and hold stock, you know, and they've got warehouses full of stock. That's what they like. That's what they want to do. Fair enough. Not what I do, and it's not what I teach. If you want to learn more about buying and flipping surplus stock like a pro without ever holding any stock in, in your business, ever, 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 okay, then click the link above, get onto a free strategy call with me, my friends, a free 30-minute strategy call. Let's see if you are a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you. And learn the method, learn the new modern way of buying and selling stock without ever holding on to any stock in your business ever. Never, ever hold any stock, okay? I will see you soon.